Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. And today we're going to be looking at the Bellphone BP750 portable radio. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box and see what it has in store for us. Okay, let's go ahead and get in the box of the BP750. So the first thing we have here on top is the radio itself. Then in the box here, we have our earpiece. We have our antenna. We have our programming cable. We have our battery. We have our power cable for our battery charger. And finally, we have our belt clip and our lanyard, our charger base, and two screws to mount the belt clip. So let me get everything rearranged here and we'll put everything together and take a look at the buttons on the radio. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our radio and install our belt clip on the back. I always like to do this without the battery so that way the clip is not under tension by having to push out. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our battery and it's going to push in here and then clip down. And then we're going to take our antenna and just screw it right on top. Okay, so let's go over the radio and buttons. We have our push to talk button here on the left side. We have two function buttons on the left side. On the top we have our classic emergency button or whatever function you set it to. We have a dual volume and channel knob here. It turns and then you press and hold to switch. We have our menu button here and back button over here or on the home screen SMS button. We have our call button that takes us into our contacts and our end button. We have a full keypad on the front here. We have our programming port here on the side. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the functions and features inside. The two side buttons here uh, from their initial program don't do anything. They're unprogrammed and uh, the same thing with the top button. So we'll start with the volume. So you can see here it's changing. Actually let's take off this screen cover real quick. So you can see here it changes the channels and then you press it once and you can turn up and down the volume. It's a nice positive click as it rotates. So let's look here in the menu. So we have our contacts list. We have our SMS. We have our call log. We have our scanning menu. Site roaming. You can lock it or manually select your site. District. So that's your zones. You can change your zones. Settings. So our initial settings here, language, voice, lots of settings. Channel settings.
system info. And then accessories, the GPS. And so those are just your basic buttons. You can program these, like I said, to a bunch of stuff. We'll go over that when we get into the software. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the features and stuff that is available for this radio. Uh, additional accessories you can also get is a six gang charger, so you can charge multiple uh, radios at the same time. They also have other additional earpieces and a larger battery that is available. So the frequency ranges for this particular radio are 136 to 174, 400 to 480 megahertz, 450 to 520 megahertz, or 350 to 400 megahertz. This particular model is the 400 to 480 megahertz. You can have up to 128 zones with up to 64 channels each, totaling 1,024 channels. It is capable of narrow and wideband channel spacing. The power output is 4 watts on high power and 1 watt on low power. This radio is capable of transmitting in DMR and in FM analog modulations. This is an IP68 rated radio. It is capable of using ARC4, AES-256, and dynamic key encryption. It has a built-in GPS, a man down feature which triggers an alarm when the radio tilts beyond a certain degree, which is set in the software. It has a lone worker mode which requires a response from the user at set intervals and triggers an alarm if the response is not received. And it has an emergency alert functions as well. This radio is capable of DMO pseudo trunk, allowing both allowing the use of both time slots on a single DMR frequency. It has full duplex calls allowing users to talk simultaneously. It can act as a single frequency repeater using one time slot for receive and the other for transmit. This radio can automatically roam between multiple sites in a DMR system and they are also ad hoc capable. This radio features a super heterodyne receiver and also has a text-to-speech option. At this point, let's go ahead and move on to our programming. Okay, so here we are looking at the software for the BP750. Uh, I'm gonna work my way through it. I'm not gonna read every single line item here. I'll go slow enough that if you wanted to pause the video, you could actually take a look and see what's going on here. So here we are, device information. We have our model number, the frequency range of the radio that we have, Firmware, UI version, serial number, and then these are the optional features. You can see everything here is checked except for ad hoc, which is not initialized on this radio. So we have our basic settings, password, display functions, battery modes, voice, uh, receive low battery intervals. And then below that we have our preset channels down here for zone and channel that you can build in. Over here we have UI settings, so you have your voice that you can change if you want to have the voice enabled. All your different tone settings. Covert mode settings that you can turn on or off depending on how you're using the radio. Your backlight settings. All your different LED options. Vibration, keypad lock, and then select button lock. Okay, then we go to button settings. And so here you can see we have quite a few options for buttons that we can select and what we can make them do. We can set our long press duration, how long do we want the actual long press to take. And then here I'll open up a list. And you can see these are all the different options that you can add to each of these. So with these keys you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine times two, so we have 18 potential options of settings you can build into the keypad. 
Then we have our one touch call settings down here. And then we're going to go to menu settings. And the menu settings, basically anything you want to be able to access while using the radio by hand instead of just the software, you can have checked off. And then anything you don't want access to, depending on the user, you can uncheck it and then they won't be able to mess with that setting. So we have our channels, utilities, encryption, device information, zone, call logs, scan, roam, accessories, which is just GPS, location, DMR, contact list, and then control services and messages. So this would be in a system, if you, somebody stole a radio, you could you send a command and kill that radio so that someone can't listen or transmit on there. Okay, we're gonna go over here to location settings. So this is your GPS settings that you can turn on or off. And you have trigger controls here as well. We have our lone worker mode and settings that you can turn on or off. And then we have our man down settings that you can turn on or off, adjust, you know, how much of a tilt on the radio, you know, stuff like that. And then we go to our emergency alarms systems here. We have our digital alarm that you can set up and tell it what to do. And then we also have an analog alarm that you can set up. We go to our scan settings. You have our sample time for each channel. And then you have your actual scan list where you can add in whatever frequencies you would like to listen to. And we go down to our roaming settings. So if you have multiple sites you want to roam between, you can turn that on. And then you can add different channels to your roaming list. So our DMR basic settings, you set up your device ID, repeater ID, and then you have all sorts of other different settings, durations that you can set as uh, your decoding, authentication, keys. And then this radio has three uh, encryptions built in. It has a basic encryption, the ARC4 encryption, and AES256 encryption. And you can add and remove keys as you'd like. And then we have our DMR contacts. You can add them in here. I just have a simplex group call 99 set up right now for testing purposes. Then we have our contacts, frequent contacts. And then our just simplex contact that I added, or group that I added a contact to. Receive group, we have our receive group, which I have our simplex in. Pre-message is just, yeah, text messages that you can pre-build. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine. What's up? You know, whatever quick stuff that you want to not have to sit there and type out the whole thing. You can just get those pre-determined and set up. And then our zones, we have, I created three zones. So I have an analog, digital, and a digital analog. And then I have our channel set up as well here. So DMR simplex channel. So you, I'm just gonna let you browse through this information. You can set it all up in many different ways. <clears throat> and then with the frequency here, you can type it in mapping. You can click that and it'll either do a zero offset, so just match it on your transmit, or if you wanted it to be five megahertz off, click mapping, and now it's gonna be five plus five megahertz. Put a minus there, it'd be minus five megahertz. So that's kind of a neat feature. And then we just have our receive group and our transmit criteria set there. And we have our analog channel, your bandwidth, wide and narrow band it's pretty similar and a much simpler way same thing you got your transmit receive frequencies your ctcss for transmit and receive and the different modes you can set there your power timeout timer etc and then you have our digital and analog channel combined and this is basically just those two pages combined together All right, so that's a general look at the B 
P750 software. So let's go ahead and move forward and we'll take a look at our testing. Okay, so we have the BP750 set up here on the TinySA Ultra. I have my spectrum analyzer set up from 400 to 480 megahertz. And we're going to key up the radio on the analog low and just see how it comes out. And so there we see 446.1. So it's very close. I also don't know how accurate this is as far as exact on and off. but So we can see that we're transmitting approximately what we should be. And we're also not seeing any spurious signals coming off the side there. So that's good. So now we're going to jump in and go to the signal generator. Set our frequency 446 megahertz and mod. We're going to select FM, 1000 hertz, 3 kilohertz deviation. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Oh wait, let's check. Oh, we got to set our gain because I have a attenuator on here. It's a 40 dB attenuator. So at neg 58 level, there's our signal. Let's just start dropping it down by 10. Now let's start going by 1. And so I'd say at neg 121, we're at approximately our 12 dB sign add. So I would say that's pretty darn good. Okay, so now that we've seen it transmits on frequency and has a good receiver in it. Let's go ahead and move this off to the side and get our watt meter hooked up here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start off with low power. I'm going to key up. And we can see we got 0.64 watts. And then we're going to go over to high power. And transmit. And we have 3.07 Zero six watts. Okay, so that's about what it's putting out right here. Uh, as far as the accuracy of this test equipment, take it with a grain of salt. You know, this is like a hundred and fifty dollar benchtop watt meter, and this is like a hundred and twenty five dollar spectrum analyzer. So this is just for reference, just to give you a general idea of where things are at. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the antenna back on this, and we're actually going to do some actual radio checks across so you guys can hear the receive audio on this. And uh, I don't have a helper today, so I'm just going to be using another radio talking into this. And then I'll swap out another radio on the bench and go out and transmit with this so you guys can actually see what the audio coming from this sounds like. And then you can kind of see what you think, you know, one versus the other which one sounds better, they sound the same, etc. So let's go ahead and get that set up and we'll get going. Okay, we've got the BP750 here. And to test it, we're going to be using the BFTD930. And I just put the tape on it, so that way when I replace this radio with this radio, it'll be a little easier to tell which one's on the table receiving. So I'm going to go ahead and head out, and then we're going to do some testing. We're going to start on the DMR simplex. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Radio test. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Radio test. Okay, our next test is going to be on analog four, four, six. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing. 
Ding. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that wraps up the testing for the BP750. And we're going to go ahead and do our closing comments and my thoughts on the radio, what I did and didn't like. And then we're just going to close out the video. So overall, the fit and finish of this radio seems pretty darn nice. It feels good in your hand. Uh, it has a lot of very similar features to the TD930 that I used for the testing purposes. Uh, one thing that may have been my fault, I don't know, I'll have to dig into it a little bit more, was that I was unable to talk with this radio to the 910 or to my 878 2 plus uh, any tone. So I don't know if it's a if it's a different type of DMR or if it's literally just some mistake that I made in the software. However, this radio talked to my 930 right out of the box. There was no problem after I did my basic programming for testing. Uh, so that's why I ended up using that. Overall, I think if this radio suits your needs as far as a business radio or just a, you want a single band ham radio, I think that's you know definitely a decent option. The one thing I didn't like about this uh, radio is right here, I'll show you. I'm going to bring it in and let's see if you can hear this. For some reason, the down arrow key on this radio has this little squeak and it's just very irritating. I'm assuming this is probably just a fluke and this is something that happened on my radio uh, and probably not all the other radios, but I don't know. You know, I only have a single sample size, so I can only tell you what I can see. So that's the one thing that I don't like about it. Uh, the overall color scheme and performance, uh, so far I'm, I'm happy with it. It functions like a radio should, and it uh, just feels like nice and durable radio. So I could see this being a real good little business radio or something like that. Um, and even, you know, something else because you can field program and upgrade and change your uh, frequencies and channels. So I think uh, it's, you know, it's functional. It's, it's pretty neat. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I should tell you about this radio, but I think that's about it. I mean, this, the programming software out of the box worked great. You know, there was no issues there and uh, yeah, it's just a nice clean radio. So if you guys want to check more about this radio, I'm going to leave a link to their website where you can go take a look at it. If you have questions, you can feel free to leave comments down below or directly ask Bellphone. They could probably answer your questions even better and more accurately than I can. So if you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please click like on the video as it helps more people to see the content. And uh, if you don't mind subscribing, I would appreciate that as well so that I can continue to bring the content uh, to you guys. You know, I can show you all sorts of different radios and electronics and power supplies, just basically anything that I think is cool and I think you guys would like to see is stuff that I'm showing you. So at this point in time, I'll say thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.